Welcome to God's Business, where I interview the top Christian influencers, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders on how you can create not just a good business, but God's business, where he's the multiplier of your success. I'm with the king of the castle. If you've seen this backdrop before, then you're going to love this guest. If you haven't seen it, you're going to love it even more. You were the guy who's just created phenomenal Christian content, current events. I just was hearing his team debrief, super impressed with what they've done. They've amassed a big following, meaning they're making a big impact. And that's why I knew I had to get out here to San Diego and make it happen. Mr. Ruslan, welcome to the show. What an intro. Top business. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the top thought leaders in business. Man, that's, that's a lot. I like it. Uh, I mean, I section. <laughs> those off there's like actually a comma in there that i kind of didn't leave but uh but if you look at the setup man what you guys do is, is done with excellence and i think that's always cool you know solomon wowed people with just how things were set up yeah and i, I always think that's cool you know coming Thank in you. here i mean we, I we look, feel like we're I scratching the surface so so that's a huge compliment but you're making me look all good man i got my turtleneck my wife made me wear this today that's a fly turtleneck i've been looking for a good turtleneck and and you're gonna what have size to give you me wear? a vendor i'm a large uh, medium large yeah, this is it looks small. good though it looks I good. I don't think you'll be able to do it, but I'm it's grateful to have you here, man. I, I think that it's always interesting to hear when people go all in, uh, meaning like some people grew up Christian. I didn't. I was in the demonic and then 18 years old, had a radical encounter. But even after that, there's a there's a point in time where it's like faith becomes real to you. Jesus becomes real to you. When was that time where you just had this like that moment where you're like, all right, this is like forever. I'm serving Jesus, not just a believer, but a follower. So I was dating a girl in high school. She was a Christian. The only way I could hang out with her is if I uh, hang out with her on the weekends is if I went to church. So I started going to church on Sundays. That's the end of my freshman year. We broke up. We dated. We broke up sophomore year, uh, junior year, same kind of thing. One foot in, one foot out. And then towards the end of my junior year, I started getting more serious. Uh, sophomore year, I was closed on Jesus. Like Jesus is God. Jesus is who he says he is. The Bible is inspired. Junior year, at the end of the junior year, me and her like finally break it off, break it off. And when we finally broke it off, broke it off, that's when I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm trying to do one foot in, one foot out. I'm going all in. I'm joining a small group. I'm connecting to my church. I'm serving. I'm, I'm doing all the things. So it's about a two year process for me. But yeah, the end of my junior year of high school. And then how long was it from there to when you actually thought about preaching? I, I went to ministry school, Instagram, I literally signed up for it. Mm -hmm. And I was on Instagram, I was on Facebook. And I never even thought like we were going, I went, me and my wife went to 14 different countries, we're preaching. And I never even thought about creating content about Jesus. Mm -hmm. No joke. Or even about like truth. Mm -hmm. What was the thing that inspired you? I feel like I'm like, I missed the boat, dude. It was like right there in front of me. And I'm mm -hmm. like, bro, what the heck? Where were you? <laughs> yeah. So, so what I was got the on, thing that inspired you? I got on YouTube to really kind of promote what I was doing with music. And that was like the first kind of set of uploads. And then it was like, let me try some vlogs. This is when Casey Neistat is super popular, that whole era. So I did that a little bit. And it's kind of like talking head videos, kind of giving people advice on marketing. Because my first thing was a musician. I did music professionally. Yep. Um, 2015 is when I quit my last job. And so I kind of had a spurt of that. And then 2018, 2019, I got serious. I went to Grow With Video Live, Sean Cannell's conference. Nice. The very first one. And that got me to better understand the mechanics of YouTube and not just the creative side. And then 2019, I did this kind of podcast format similar to this, but I was I had a mobile setup. So I was going around just traveling, interviewing everybody I can I can interview. And then 2020, the pandemic happened. And that's when I intentionally pivoted to doing like hot take reaction style videos because I yeah. couldn't interview nobody. There's nobody to interview. So I got to about 15,000 subscribers that way. And then 2020 pandemic, I think it's just kind of the perfect storm. I can't interview anyone. So I started doing my own kind of opinions, reaction videos, and then did a couple remote interviews. And then that was when kind of everything changed. It was it was uh, the end of 2020. I think I went into 2020 with like 15,000 subs. And then going into 2021, I want to I want to say I had like 50 to 60,000 subs. So that was pretty wow. incremental. And then the end of 2021 is when we cracked 100,000 subs. So fairly, really fairly fast. But yeah, it just kind of happened because I needed to do something. I couldn't travel. I couldn't do music. And it just made sense. And the crazy kind of like fall into it. This is why it's called God's business. And business to me is like, what's the mission that you're called to? And for a lot of these guys, it's it's in the marketplace. Yet, you know, look at how it's expressed. You're doing, you're literally on a highly professional studio and you're putting out great content. A lot of these guys are doing the same thing. So like, that's why I look at it these two things coming together inside of the the faith category in your relationship with God, having that encounter, going all in. For you, how did you develop that? Like, how did you develop as a Christian? Because you don't just come out here and do content and give opinions unless you know God's word, know what he says, know what his opinion is on it, which I'm assuming is mostly what you communicate, not random opinions, sure. but God's opinion. How did you develop that? Was it like a school? Like, how'd you get confident? Was it a great church? Was it great mentors? Yeah, it was leading at the church that I, I got saved 
season and I, I kind of transitioned churches and I got involved in leadership. But what it really was is leading a men's group for a very long time. Wow. And I was always not afraid to share my opinion. I was always not afraid to lean into hard conversations. And so our men's group, which we did for decades, we would meet up and the opening, I don't know, 30 minutes, we'd talk about whatever was happening in culture, whatever current events, what, what people were going through, and then kind of segueing into a Bible study based off of that. And so when I looked in hindsight, what did I do the most of it was that. It was actually wow. showing up every Monday for over a decade and having men's group conversations, but opening it with whatever's going on in society right now. What's going on? What are you anxious about? What is, what's happening in the news? And so that was just a simple segue, but I didn't quite know it until I just kind of stumbled upon it. And then in hindsight, like you look back and you go, oh, I'm actually most proficient and most efficient at this format. Out of everything that I could be doing, this is the one that makes the most sense. Why? Because I'd done it the longest. Yeah. Right? I actually hadn't done music as long as I had done leading Bible studies. I hadn't done these other things as long as, and so it was just the, the just the reps. Like it's not, it wasn't super deep, but, but in that group is we went through the Bible cover to cover, maybe six or seven times, right? And so there's a lot of, we read a lot of books together. So, you know, sometimes we just go through the Bible in a year. Other times we read, read, read books and cover those. Sometimes we just recap what the Sunday morning sermon was. So you kind of, I and, and I'm leading all of this for the most part. And out of that group, a lot of amazing people came out of that group as well. My friend, Pastor Daniel Golding, pastors a young adults ministry in Gilbert, Arizona, near Gilbert, Arizona, yeah. one of the fastest growing churches in America. Uh, belief from Belief in Fatherhood came out of that group. So we had a lot of really talented people that came out of that group that went on to do incredible things. Yeah. Even one thing I took away from that is that a cool thing to do is look at current events and then go find in scripture where you can study what do we, what's our opinion about this or not even what's our opinion, what does God say about this? Because mm -hmm. we can see that those are two very different things a lot of times. Right. People come up and they'll be like, oh, this is what I think. I remember I, when I got saved, someone goes, do you believe in evolution? Mm -hmm. And I was like yeah mm -hmm. and they were like well the bible says evolution ain't true and i was like oh then then no you know mm -hmm. i was like literally got saved sure. the day before so i was like i'm like uh, i'm trying to align with what god says but like but if you take those questions and study the other one was proficiency some people they've been writing for a long time mm -hmm. for for me i love the the interview aspect right it's mm -hmm. like you, you're always going to stink at everything you do but if you do something enough you kind of find what you have a capacity to grow in sure and for you you in that space it was like well maybe not just speaking or maybe not just writing Mm -hmm. And the performing, I'm sure, helped as well. So it's cool to see yes. like proficiency that you you kind of build up a skill. And so what is that for other people? Right. Is it the writing? Is it the short form, long form? Well, I think it's self-awareness first and foremost. I was, uh, I just went to my 20 year high school reunion Saturday. Dang, and bro. You look like you're like 30. Thank you. I appreciate it. And we connected with a Where'd lot of friends. Where'd you go to friends. high school? Vista High School. Oh, wow. Like yeah. literally. Like wow. down the street. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we connected with a lot of friends. And one of the things they said to me that was really interesting is a buddy of mine who I'm, I'm still kind of friendly with, he said, um, it makes sense what you're doing now because he said, you've never been afraid to piss people off, you know? And I'm like, that's it. Like wow. that's a lot of what being a creator is, is like, if you're just going to have a vanilla opinion on stuff, then you aren't going to disrupt and cut through in any way, shape or form. Wow. Right. So yep. I, I had that in high, before I was sick, I had that ability to just have a hot take and just say something that was disruptive, not care what people think and be okay with upsetting people and not being like, so I think one, it's that. And then two, it's walking through the, the tech side and saying like, how am I going to do all this? Yep. And then three, it's just, it's just executing, just doing it over and over and over again. And actually speaking on something that's coming for me area of expertise of something you have tacit knowledge in, not something that you you have ideas about, but something that you've actually walked through. I've been yep. married 15 years. I've gotten out of debt. I've, I've gone through a lot of stuff, right? Got out of porn addiction, like worked on my mental health, all these different things. So when I'm making the content, I'm not pontificating about random stuff I don't know about. I'm yep. actually leaning into my area of expertise, which I think makes the content effortless and easier to make. I've seen two different sides of Christians. There's like the, the side that they're so into the business and format that they never really even incorporate it's like God's a separate thing that they do outside mm -hmm. of it, like as if they're split in half. On the other side, it's people that are kind of hyper spiritual and they don't know how to integrate the actual tech. You said, oh, I need to buy a computer and get a camera and, mm -hmm. and clip a video a certain way. Mm -hmm. And they never go down that route. And so they're kind of missing those two. For you, I would like to hear kind of the journey of you get on YouTube, start producing content, kind of the shifts and the changes and the failures. Like we have the highlight of like, we can see how your subscribers have grown, mm -hmm. but there's gotta be like deviations and, and all right, no, let's turn around. Let's not do that anymore. Mm. Or this didn't work or things that you tried that failed. Yeah. And, and also just kind of how you, we talked about how you grew in your faith, but how did you actually grow in the business knowledge. I know one event, but one event ain't going to get yeah. you equipped to Yeah, well, it. I mean, you'd, you'd actually be surprised how much one event and, and a handful of relationships can impact somebody. So it's not to say that that one event 
taught me everything I knew, but that one event definitely just set you on track. It set me on wow. track because I did like, I'll give you the most practical aspect of this whole thing. I didn't want to make thumbnails. I thought thumbnails were cringe. I thought thumbnails were, were whack. I was like, I mean, That's they are so... kind of cringe and whack for right? what they work. <laughs> but, but what happened was he sat me down, Sean from Think Media sat me down and goes, you need to sit down with vidIQ. And they did like yep. a channel assessment. And that was one of the things they walked away with. Because I, I was also struggling. Like, man, I don't want to make this kind of content. And they're like, okay, it's fine. You're a novelty channel. You're going to talk about a lot of different stuff. Cool. However, you got to make thumbnails. And so I walked away from that with like one really practical point. They're like, I have to do this. Yep. And that is, again, I'm at 5,000 subscribers. And so that like catapults me to 15,000 subscribers in a year, which is, you know, what is that? A 3X, you know, uh, increase. Yeah, yeah. It's you know? like 200% grown. Right, growth. right. And so so, so there was that. I, I would say in, in terms of all of it, it's hard to describe the YouTube stuff because the YouTube stuff, once it clicked, it just compounded. Like once it all clicked, it just compounded, right? Wow. Now you're going to have ebbs and flows. Summer months are slow. January, the CPMs and the RPMs go down, right? So that's always going to happen, right? So less people are watching June, July. YouTube's paying less in January because December, everybody blasted out their ad spends on YouTube. YouTube ads, right? So those things are happening. But in terms of the, like, it's been fairly consistent in, in trajectory up. Now, the way I learned everything is I was doing music. I wanted to record myself. So 20 something years ago, my mom got me a computer. I was one of the first people that had like a PC. I learned to record myself. I learned to make my own beats. Then I wanted to shoot more music videos. This is 2008, 2009. Not a lot of people were doing music videos, 2009, 2010. So my buddy had a DSLR. He shot the videos, but it would, he would charge me less if I would edit them. And so the the same software I was making music on had a version of the software for video. Same shortcuts, same workflow, same outline. Stack that skill from music to video editing. Shot a bunch of my own music videos. And then that led me to getting Final Cut Pro and getting my own DSLR. And then I started uh, helping other artists. And then my buddy Daniel, who I told you about earlier, said, hey, let's do a video announcement for the church, a fake video announcement for the church. Video announcements are super hot in 2012, end of 2012. So I got a job at the church. That's how I learned broadcasting because I learned video switchers, cameras, all these things. And I wasn't even really that good, but he kind of finessed me a job at the church to do video announcements. And so that's how I got the job at church. By the time I, I worked at the church for two years, at the end of that, I know a whole lot. And then wow. the video switchers, it wasn't a $5,000 video switcher that the, the, all of a sudden the, the, the price went down. So then we have a $1,000 video switcher. Okay, I could afford that. Let me scrape together some money to get that. And then that's when I said, okay, now I could do stuff like this, which is cut cameras live in person while I'm traveling. And then I just kept learning the tech, you know? So that, that was the trajectory like the, the tech side of it. Yeah. And so what was the journey with the content? There's so many times where you're like, people try to find their voice. And I know that you came from looking back now in hindsight, just like Joseph did. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, like you didn't sell me into slavery. Like mm -hmm. that was God's plan the whole time. Like, all right, well, looking back, I can see how going from the church Monday mornings or like the men's group and mm -hmm. then working at the church and then learning the video and being a rapper and mm -hmm. like all these different things kind of built into this. But was there a time where you were, were like felt trapped in your content ever like you're like oh, i can only talk about this i want to talk about this have you ever started a different channel where you're yeah, like i'm going to yeah. talk about gardening and i don't want anyone no. to know <laughs> obviously <laughs> not gardening not gardening yeah so so we got we have three channels now the first channel my, my main my main channel was initially i was kind of doing like lifestyle stuff like like vlogging stuff and then like marketing ideas for christians and it just wasn't a big enough niche for that so when, then, when did you start with the marketing ideas for christians because i didn't know this existed 2018 bro. 2019 wow that's when i was kind because of, i was just whatever i did christian bands christian musicians not even yeah, yeah. Not, not not broadly Christians, but like Christian rappers specifically. Cool. Because I just was like, okay, well, I made it to doing six figures a month. So off. This is uh, like six, six Lecrae is like a Christian rapper. Yes, C1? Lecrae is a Christian rapper. Where, where yeah. the, there's like another one too. There's Blake a lightly. There, there, there's a lot. Let's like not let's not open that can of worms. The Christian rappers is a ton of Christian rappers, <laughs> but they weren't good. They weren't good at marketing. Yeah. Of course. So I'm like, okay, I did something that's very rare, which is get to a place of doing six figures a year. Wow. Off of music, Christian music, Christian rap music at that wow, independently. Wow. That was step. That was iteration one iteration two is interviews yep. iteration three is let me infuse my faith interviewing? Like, what was whoever it i could just about Christian rappers people backstage people i found interesting people that were in town i interviewed a couple from my church that wanted to uh adopt um uh, uh adopt a baby and so we helped them so like joe rogan through. doesn't have necessarily like a topic yeah, it was just like everything interesting people let's yep. go deep on it yep Crazy. and and then my channel blew up because I leaned into the faith side because I never talked about my faith really. It was more just conversational. Yep. 
And then I wanted to talk about other stuff like relationships. I wanted to talk about business and marketing still. So we started a second channel for called Bless God Studios. That's almost at 200,000 subscribers. Um, the main channel is at like 370,000. And then we have a third smaller channel, which is called Mastermind My Business, which is kind of like conversations like this. Wow. And so, yeah. So yeah, I like the business stuff doesn't always fit on the main channel. People are there for faith. People are there for Bible studies. They don't want to hear me rant about yeah, yeah. business and money well, and all that kind of stuff. What's your advice in those three categories? Because those are really cool. You got like three different categories of content. Mm -hmm. What's your advice in those three categories? What's the nuance of difference? Because there's mm -hmm. got to be commonalities. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Taylan. You know that guy, Taylan? Yep. He grew up. Yep. So Ta Taylan did a training for our, our men on just YouTube growth. Mm -hmm. And and one of the things that it was like click through rate and watch time. And, and we were like not tracking because I didn't really do YouTube at all. Mm -hmm. So I was like, we were just tracking views and things. Paid ads was more important. Mm -hmm. And I was like, bro, we never even looked at our YouTube watch time on shorts. Mm -hmm. And, and so there's things that obviously work like a thumbnail mm -hmm. that you talked about. Mm -hmm. Need a thumbnail, mm -hmm. probably. What are the core things that are similar that work no matter what that you feel like everyone who wants to grow on YouTube could do? And then also, is there any nuances of differences? Because teaching in business is different than, you know, for me talking about men's stuff and fatherhood a lot. Mm -hmm. It's just different than... Mm -hmm. Hey, do you want to know how you can make ten thousand dollars in the next ninety days yeah, yeah, yeah. starting a digital marketing agency? Yeah. So there's nuances. What's the difference sure. between your three channels? How do you go about yeah. making content for them? So main channel, Ruslan, primarily faith based stuff. We're going to talk about culture and faith. Yep. Bible study. There's going to be some Bible study in there, not like extensive, exhaustive. Though we are like going through a book of the Bible right now, so that's pretty pretty straightforward. Bless God Studios it will be clips from different interviews. Will also be maybe stuff that's just a little broader that doesn't necessarily have to come back to a Bible verse, but it's just a little broader about like relationships or YouTube culture or stuff like that. And then that's going to be more philosophies about relationships, philosophies about dating, philosophies about uh, maybe a tad bit of like social or like slightly political, but more like social type issues, right? So that would be like the second channel and then the the so the value add on there is just kind of thinking through things that are a little broader than just culture and faith training events and faith right and then uh, the business channel is just going to really be driving home the point is like what is your value add like you want to be an influencer great what what problem are you solving what yep. are you actually fixing that would want make somebody want to watch your content and yep. if it's just about you and your ego and wanting a platform then like quit like stop that's a terrible thing to be famous for it's like yeah how cool you are right versus like hey i actually have a solution to a problem people have and then this solution helps people break through and you know so that's kind of that is like driving people back and then the content gets filtered through what area of expertise do you have that helps you solve a problem for your audience once you solve this problem for your audience they give you their attention that is how you build an audience yeah so good man and take this with a grain of salt uh, the what's the business model behind it i'm saying this because like for me me running businesses i i wrote a book mm -hmm. and because i don't I didn't just write a book. I do shows where I'll literally ship out. And I learned this from Chandler. He's like, I pay for the shipping, the book and everything. Don't mm -hmm. even take credit card. I'm just like, just send me your address mm -hmm. and I will literally ship you out a book mm -hmm. because I can. And I lose money on every single one mm -hmm. because I make money a different way. Mm -hmm. And and but it wouldn't be bad if I made money off a book either. If I maybe I coach people for free, but because I'm like, I sold a million copies of a book. Sure. So I'm, I'm taking it with a grain of salt. I think that for business owners, they look at why. How does this contribute to the company, the mission, the vision? If it mm -hmm. just eats mm -hmm. money, it's not good. Like, yeah. I mean, you can't buy lights. You can't sure. interview people. You can't travel. Sure. Right. It's like it's a big ordeal. So for you, if you kind of unveil Hey, here's kind of the model. Are you? Is it mostly YouTube revenue, or is there consulting oh, on the back yeah, yeah, end? Yeah. Like, because I'm sure there's yeah. give and take there. Whereas maybe your Christian, maybe your Bible study, you're like, oh, I don't care to make money off a of Bible study, but I make money off of you know putting this this mason jar right here that they want to sell <laughs> Hobby Lobby. You know, Hobby Lobby shout out. Yeah. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Hobby Lobby's legit, bro. Okay, so revenue streams, um, business model. A lot of times people have a product and then they want to build an audience yep. after the product, which is which is great if you. Have have a great product, right? If you have an amazing product, you can build out the audience in, in hindsight. So this would be kind of like the Alex Hermosi model, right? You, you He does gym launch, builds it out, is amazing. And then makes millions and millions and millions, and then can hire a guy to do all this content for 40, 40 grand a month or twenty grand a month, right? I think he's at one hundred and twenty k a month. Is it one hundred and twenty k? I mean, <laughs> it makes sense because his content yeah, consistently yeah. gets better and better. Then there's like creatives like me who are creative artist first. Yep. And I had to learn to be entrepreneurial, right? And we build the, the 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 art, we build the content, we build the media, right? And so if I had to define what the business model is right now, what we're doing is we have a media company. That is yep. what we do. We do media. We're not an education company. Um, and we don't really even have any products yet besides merchandise, right? Now, the pros is that we have a, a ton of attention, 
We have decent size email list, Instagram following, uh, YouTube, all that stuff is great. The cons is that we're dependent on AdSense and that's not, that's scary because CPMs and what people are paying for ads go down in January, June and July, everyone's on vacation, views dip, right? And so it's a bit, it's a volatile industry because you are a media company or it's, it's, it's entertainment. Yep. That's the con of it. And so our biggest revenue stream is a YouTube AdSense across three channels. It's, it's And this a, is just people are watching the video and people watch the ads before and you get paid because you're bringing them to the platform. You're that's keeping it. them on. Yep, that's yep. it. And so YouTube pays us well. Facebook would be our probably our second biggest revenue stream. Our third, second, third biggest revenue is our monthly premium partnership. We call it, it's on, it's on our Patreon. And it's so- exclusive, exclusive content. Exactly, exactly. Extra yep. stuff, access. Extra stuff, yep, yep. Conversations, extra stuff. Every interview we do has an exclusive part that's too spicy that maybe the YouTube algorithm won't like or it's maybe even against community guidelines, right? So the, every so so people will pay to do that. So we have about- uh, 20 almost 2200 people monthly that pay five, awesome. five to ten bucks yeah right and, and which so, is like even people do it to watch people play video games yeah so it's like five bucks a month is like the yep. minimum that people yep. pay to watch some guy run yes. around in circles yes so it's it becomes this thing where it's i think about how valuable that could potentially be for people right that's awesome right and and, and so then we become our own subscription right? Because people yep. get stuff, they forget about stuff. And so it's like, we're, we're on the, the only down, downside about using Patreon is that you're still on another platform and you, yep. don't, you don't own it. So in a perfect world, we would have just built our own membership behind our own paywall or, or something like that, right? If I can go back. The pros of Patreon is that there's already a community there. There's people that partner with other Patreons. So it's not a huge barrier to entry. Yep. But if I could if I could go back, I would have created like a one-click partner and that's it. Breaking Points does a good job. I think they use like Wirecast, which is like you get a daily podcast every day that's unedited and there's some of content there. So anyway, that's the that's the the media side. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to make get our monthly partners to be the ones who cover all of our overhead. Yep. So that way all the payroll, everything is covered through that and then everything else that comes in is profit. YouTube is profit, everything else is profit. So that's the the current business model. What we're looking to do is we're launching physical products. So the main physical product is is we already have it but it just doesn't do very much is our merch store, our apparel yep. store monthly drops with different um, different pieces and really marketed well, promoted well. And so we finally like figured out that system. And so we're actually launching our first new collection this, this weekend. Um, and then we're doing a prayer journal, which is gonna be another physical product. Again, now I'm solving for an actual problem I've always had, what yep. keeps me praying consistently and keeps me seeing that prayer works is writing down my prayers. We put together um, a prayer journal that we're super pumped on. So that's gonna be uh, the, the the another product, like a physical product that I'm super excited about. And then th and now we're getting into Facebook, pixels, retargeting ads, all, all those different things because we have so much pixel information. Yep. We have that going for us. And so and then and then I'm also writing a book. So there's that. We've intentionally stayed away from education just because we wanted to really do awesome things before we try and educate and tell other people how to do awesome things, yeah. right? So we've intentionally stayed away from We have one, uh, well, we have a couple of digital courses, but the only digital course that we charge for is um, Master YouTube Live, which is basically how I built my whole system. And cool. And would you go deeper bucks. in that direction when you talk about education, or are you planning on going in a no. different direction? Uh, that's, that's a great question. So the only other, edu so, so I'm trying to do mass market education. There's a lot of guys that are the version of me from 20 years ago who are struggling with their purpose, struggling mm -hmm. with their identity, struggling with uh, usually some sort of self-destructive uh, habit like porn, don't know how financial literacy works, don't know how to manage money well. And so that's the the macro pro pro problem we would solve is through some, a bit broader. Yep. Um, that's where we primarily start with Christians first and then hopefully go a little broader than that, Christian men and then go broader. Um, and that would be through the book. Nice. That would be through the book. And then, um, so we're, we have a couple of meetings with some of the different publishers from the big five publishing houses. And then the only education thing we would do is some sort of, um, we've been toying around with the idea of like an in-person mastermind. Yep. Um, just because we look at the completion rates of our courses and it's just like, man, this is this is brutal. You know, yep. like it's so low that people are, aren't completing these courses. A lot of times, I mean, the, we have, again, we have two free ones and we have the paid one. And I'm like, dude, like you guys aren't even watching. You're paying, I think it's like 400 bucks for the course or whatever yep. it is right now. And you're not even finishing it. Yeah, like 80% you know? of people on average just never 
never finish a course. Yeah, and I just I just feel icky about trying to go like the education route when I know yeah. that's true. Now, what I like about the idea of a mastermind is that um, the group can be self-sustaining yep. and self-nurturing. Correct. And then you can pre-qualify people. And so you can have an a amazing mastermind with 20 people, but they're all already building businesses yep. and already doing six figures or seven figures. Totally. That makes sense to me yep. versus like, let me go and nickel and dime a uh, thousand Five hundred dollar courses. That just does not sound interesting to me in the slightest. Yeah. Um, whereas, like, if we can, if we can do, like, so we're doing live events now. So we have our first live event August twenty sixth. So we might figure out a way to use the live event, which is a very low barrier to entry, to pre qualify specific yeah. people. And then now, hey, we're doing this thing once a month is virtual. Once a month we get together. Maybe they come here, and so yeah. we're trying to flesh that out. So that's yeah. that's kind of like the business model. But the the pros is that we have an audience. That's the that's the yeah. pro. Correct. The con is we're dependent on ad. Sense. We're we're freaking YouTubers. We're creators, right? Yeah. Which is like cool. It sounds sexy, but from the outside, from, from the inside, it's like, man, that 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 revenue stream could be very volatile. On top of censorship, on top of like, am I allowed to say what I really want? We have to speak in code if we're talking about trans uh, ideology and that yep. stuff. We say transformers if we're talking about LGBTQ. We say LGTV. Like we have all these codes to navigate yeah, yeah. around the algorithms. That's not super fun. And so, uh, yeah. So that's the that's the business model. Yeah, so good, man. And one thing that was really encouraging to me, one of my great friends, Peng Jun, he's one of the best stage presenters in the world. He always told me, he's like, Nicholas, if you create, let's say, like the mastermind, you're like, I want to do that. He's like, the people that don't want it won't buy it. <laughs> and all you're doing if you don't do it is you're just forfeiting the people that are like, yeah, I really want that deeper group. Mm -hmm. I really want some more hands on. I really want to be around the legit ones. Right. And I saw this in Christian events. This is how I created even my King's Brotherhood. Is mm -hmm. I went to a Christian event, it's 2,000 men, and I was like, this is my tribe. Mm. And then afterwards, it was tough to find like the ones that just really wanted to go deep and really mm -hmm. grow. Mm -hmm. It's kind of flaky. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. like, man, I wish they would have just had like something I could just pay yep. to kind of just like get the barrier. If you're not really committed and, and you care about your money more than being in the group, yep. then then keep it yep. and go put it somewhere else. But we care less about our money mm -hmm. than being in this group with these committed people. Yep. And so I went through an event and that's how I started doing events. And mm -hmm. so, you know, encouragement is like, it, there's going to be people out there that will absolutely love it. And, yep. and then also with the AdSense thing, this is kind of, from my perspective, maybe you guys have gone through this, maybe you haven't. But also, is it tough navigating knowing, oh, well, these ones do so well, these topics and videos, and maybe it's not what you really would love to talk about, but mm -hmm. you're like, well, if we talk about this, then... Mm -hmm. You know, we get destroyed and we can't even pay our guys. And mm -hmm. it's not even just about you making money. I mean, I saw your Lambos and Ferraris out for, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I told no, him no, I was gonna, no Lambos and Ferraris. I was gonna, yeah. I was gonna, I told him I was gonna <laughs> joke with you. No Lambos and Ferraris out front. Um, but, but I, not even for the making money sense, yeah. but like it takes people and equipment and, and editing yeah. just to produce what people love. And yeah. that takes money. Yes. And yes. so it, how do you navigate that where you're being pure in your heart going, I'm not just creating this piece of content sure. because it needs to, you know, yeah. cover yeah. the net. It's, it's, if we were attempting to just make money, we would just do celebrity pastor sucks video and just dunk on celebrity pastors. I would have a thousand Stephen Furtick videos, a thousand Mike Todd videos, and yeah. those would crush. Yeah. Right. And I and it would be bad faith. They would be uh, playing into this like pharisaical heresy hunter. Oh, but, tearing but, people apart. Biggest the bad. The Christian tear apart yes. videos. Yes. H three H three. Doesn't he do those? He. Like, he I but, don't. I don't keep up with this stuff. But the, yes. So like if, if 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 that if the if money was to play, then we would just dunk on celebrity pastors all day. And and, and it would. Be, but we even internally go yeah let's you know we, we got we did too many lgbtq videos this week uh we did too yeah we, uh, we just did a celebrity pass right and yeah, yeah. and and so intentionally we're also thinking about how do we add net positive videos yeah, yeah. you walk away from the video not angry and and like yeah that those those people are bad but you walk away from the video going oh i feel i learned something there was a net po i learned about someone that's doing good work right yeah. highlighting and making the videos yes and uh, format and so like yeah. we've intentionally done then done that sort of stuff and so yeah it's it's a delicate balance because a lot of what works on youtube is dunking on other people yeah. and uh that i don't think is healthy to make i don't think it's healthy to consume all the time but it's sometimes the, it's a nature of of the content so i if i genuinely disagree with someone and i'm like yo this uh, this opinion is ideolo ideologically stupid i will say that right yeah. uh but we try not to overdo that sort of content you yeah know? so like we're doing a video today. Uh, one of today's topics is like Jordan Peterson changes Bill Maher's mind on uh, the Bible. It's not a video dunking on how stupid Bill Maher is. It's just saying, wow, this is interesting. Like he's sitting here mocking the Bible. And then within the, the entire exchange, 
Jordan Peterson turns it around and presents a, a story from the Bible that like actually makes sense to him that he never really thought about that way, right? Yeah. That's a different approach than like Bill Maher is a dumb atheist, ha ha, right? Yeah. So I would say I would say that is how uh, we, we try to navigate that. But yeah, it yeah. is it is it is hard because you know it works for the algorithm. Yeah, and yeah. it can be tempting that way. Absolutely, that's crazy. Who's a content creator that you? looked up to or or maybe looked up to and then who do you look up to now that you feel like is doing a good job oh man i would say uh, a lot of my friends honestly um alan parr from the beat he just cracked a million subscribers i think he does a fantastic job he has a way of disagreeing with that what while still being gracious um and so i think his content is is really sharp uh, my buddy what do you meme he kind of does like video essays so his stuff is written out word for word and you could tell <laughs> it's not like a podcast like it's just really well done um so he's a good friend of mine um yeah so i would say those are probably uh, the crazy part is like those are some of my favorite creators in the space and then they're also like friends of mine yeah you know? And so Alan was just here on Thursday. He was in town with, and our families got together and we hung out, didn't didn't do a podcast, didn't make any content, just hung out. And so I would say those two are probably my favorite. Mike Winger, I think is another one. Mike Winger goes really deep on um, Bible studies or like he's doing like a series on women in ministry. And this dude, I want to say had a seven hour video or six hour video. Wow. Something insane, right? Like, like live? Like you went live or you up or you sat there in an office for six hours? <laughs> it was a, it was a scripted video with notes, Bro, sources, no commentaries. Wow. Six hours long, something like that. Excuse me. So uh he can go really, really deep and um and does good stuff. And and so yeah, so I think I think those three are probably like I said, some of my favorite. But there's a lot of really good Christian creators, man, that I if I even try to name them off, wow. there's so many that do a good job and a lot of them are the, the guys that are theologically trained, which is the guys I like seeing and I like promoting because they're just smarter than I am, um, kind of struggle with the tech. And so a lot of times I'm just trying to help them understand and solve for tech issues. And then the guys that are like super duper charismatic on camera and understand the tech are often know the least about the Bible. So they can give you a hot take and they're maybe they're good looking, maybe they're funny, maybe they're interesting, but they don't... They don't really know what they're t talking about the same way, right? So it's like trying to trying to connect different people in the, in in this space, and yeah, um, a, a guy right now that I'm a big fan of that I'm actually doing the event. He's doing they're doing our event August 26th. Uh, God Logic uh, Apologetics. He has a channel called God Logic Apologetics. Just cracked crack, crack 50,000 subscribers. Um, he'll go down to uh, the Bobo Bobo Park in san diego and debate yeah. like the leading sheikh muslim apologist yeah, and like crazy. uh really sharp he's not i don't even think he's even 30 really sharp really smart really good debater but his you know his videos are it's like a phone like it, like the content doesn't matter if it's good you know like if it's good it doesn't matter he's really 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 good at what he does so that's another guy i'm thinking about so there's a lot of really cool folks in the space yeah so good man i for a lot of our guys you know they're running a business on that side mm -hmm. they're not content creators that are like you know i want to now add products or something like that so if you were to we'll talk about youtube i'm sure you kind of like customize each platform mm -hmm. and i would love to kind of know how you, you do you drip down from youtube then yeah. youtube's top so yeah so YouTube's youtube top. youtube will be top of funnel some instagram instagram's hard because it, it's even shorter right a youtube average duration is four minutes right so i'm really yeah. just trying to get people you in. guys pump out shorts though we do like crazy we, on youtube is it uh, not crazy uh, probably a shorter day nothing crazy like oh, that wow. yeah, yeah yeah so uh, we, we could do more, but it's just the shorts is a great way to grow your subscriber base. Yeah. But you can have a million subscribers and no one watches your mid form or your long form. Yeah, content, I've seen that. Which is which is horrifying to me because the value, again, if we're talking value, um, a shorts view is not the same as a regular YouTube view. No. Nah. Right? A, a regular YouTube view is not the same as a podcast consumption. Yep. Strictly off a of watch time, podcast is 20 to 25 minutes average yep. uh, consumption of what people consume. Versus a YouTube video is four minutes. So like, wow, it's really just it's 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 a funnel. Think of it the same way as as what is your, what is your top of funnel? Our top yep. of funnel is YouTube Shorts, Instagram. We want to get people onto a live stream. You know, ultimately we want to get people in our membership or get people over to our podcast and then listening for an for hours. Yep. And then those people, even though there's less of them, not all three hundred seventy thousand of our subscribers are watching every video or every long video, but those 10,000, 20,000 folks that sit and watch a two hour podcast, those are the people that that like we build relationship with and build rapport. Let, let's say it's me or obviously these guys out here since I'm not the best example, but mm -hmm. you can speak to me. Uh, let's say I want to start a new YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, this is what you're going to do. Make sure you have thumbnails for every video. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to create this many videos a week. 
you're going to make sure you have this kind of format. I love how you talked about you just glazed over it with the, if you're just kind of vanilla, mm-hmm. you ain't going to reach anyone. Yep. Some, someone once told me, if everyone likes you, no one loves you. Yep, that's right. It's just like, no one's going to really go deep. And so, if, but if someone loves you, that means someone else is going to be able to disagree. Yep, that's right. So that was a great thing. But if it was like, here's your, here's your start YouTube and start growing for dummies, commit to these things and look up in 90 days or mm-hmm. a year, mm-hmm. what would kind of be your toolkit? Well, I, w- I would say uh, th- these are guys who already have a product. Yeah, they already they are. Okay. Give and, me an example of a product, because then we can we can kind of we can, we can let's let's go up. with the sales product. Then I I, okay. I want to get on. I want to talk about sales. Okay. I want to talk about sales for service base and and for people that sell high ticket. Okay. Want to monetize their information. Okay. Like, oh man, I, I I I'm doing consulting. I'm making money, but I would love to reach more people. Give the content away for free, but I I need to attract more leads as well. So like okay. Alex Ramosi okay. did gym launch, no social presence. Mm-hmm. Dude, the dude did. 50 million in 20 months. Mm-hmm. And I think he had 1700 followers on Facebook okay. at the time. Yep. So like now he's like, you know what? I want to get into content, Right. we don't have to go as crazy as 120,000 sure, a month sure, sure. budget. Yep. But so I, I got the expertise. I'm killing it, but I want to reach more people and yeah. with that type of content, the sales stuff. Yeah. So sales. So, so, so you have a sales book or sales course, sales course. You have a sales course and let's just say it, and it's evergreen course. Yep. Okay. So the course is going to give me, I mean, it is going to give me the best, yeah, recipes, the script, yep. scripts, the exact script everything. that you need okay. to close high ticket, the exact way to build out the offer, the exact way to find what offer you should be selling. Got it. Okay. Exactly the way to generate the leads and market it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is what I would do is I would have, I would have some sort of long form like you're doing. Yep. Right. Where you're talking about stuff uh, related to sales and is also going to incorporate something happening in the marketplace around sales. So who are the biggest names in sales right now? We'd probably say Alex Ramosi. Yep. I don't know if we throw Gary V in that in that bucket. Grant Cardone would be Grant, in there. Grant He's Cardone. Got some stuff around. Uh that guy, uh oh gosh, what is the guy that they used to work with Grant Cardone that does stuff? Uh, Brad, Jared, Brad Bradley yeah, Bradley Jared Bradley. Grant, yep. So so I would say top of fun so 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 we're doing a podcast. In that podcast, we're gonna Pull some things that they've said that you either agree or disagree with. Strongly agree, strongly disagree. Yep. What has Alex Hermosi said about, you know, I don't know, sales lately? What has Grant Cardone said? What has Brad Lee said? What are the top kind of names? Infusing what they're saying into the podcast. Yep. So we're having a conversation like this and we're literally pulling up clips and we're saying, man, Alex Hermosi said that, you know, he doesn't know if, um, you know, selling before you have this amount of expertise is worth it. And he wanted to go and first build before, right? So, so we kind of incorporated, we play a clip, we react to it. Now we have, uh, now we have other things that we're anchoring around the podcast that just makes it more interesting. Yeah. Other names in that niche that are big, big names. And you're going to have a strong agree or disagree with them. Correct. Okay. Then we're going to take those videos and all of those are going to get clipped into individual clips for YouTube. Yep. So we're taking an hour long podcast. We're clipping that into 10, well, maybe let's just call it eight minute clips. So say six clips. So now yeah. we got six individual videos. All of those videos are going to be around something people care about. Grant Cardone is the worst sales guy ever, right? Yeah. Hot take. Oh, and he's into Scientology and that's a scam. Okay, yeah. boom, that's a hot take, right? Yep. And you get tie in somehow about, and I'm just using Grant Cardone as, as an example. And then, so now you have six individual videos. Every video is touching on other things. It's in a conversational format. So you're leaning into your expertise. And then those clips can get taken and, and made into shorts. Yep. So now we're taking that and we're taking a six minute clip, eight minute clip. We're, ta- we're chopping that into a 60 minute short that makes it punchy. The short is going to point people back to the, the mid form. We call it mid form, yep. six to 10 minute video. Those are going to point people back to the long form. And, that, and that's how we would build yeah. that up. And you, so you love that hot take stuff. Like yeah, my wife, good. my wife sends me stuff every day and she's like, love, do a reaction to this. I'm like, mm-hmm. honey, I got to Google how to do a reaction. I'm like, do I do it on my phone? I got to yep. green screen this yep. thing. But like, if I could figure that out, you're saying, bro, take, take some of the stuff that's either current or people that are famous around that subject yep. almost yep. and give your opinion. And, and even on the faith perspective, yep. I'd be like, yo, like this is way hardcore. The Bible doesn't teach selling like this at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it isn't exactly. about getting people to rip their money out of their pocket. Exactly. It's about giving people something that they've always wanted that they're afraid to go after. Exactly. And so I, I like- So I, th- I think there would be a lot of yes and content with Alex. Cause yep. I think that's, I, I, I've talked to Alex about this over DM, but he definitely has a, I would say a biblical worldview in the way he approaches business and sales, even though he's not a Christian anymore. Yep. Is, and, and I've asked him this and he's like, yeah, that's, 
you're right. Like a, a lot of what I do is inspired by the Bible, even though I don't believe in God anymore, which is really interesting. I've, I've, I would love to have a podcast with him about it. Yeah, um, me too. So I think, I think yes. So what Alex Hermos, you do yes and content. And then with like a Brad Lee, he makes it so easy because Brad Lee does exactly what I'm talking about. He does reactions yep. and he has hot takes about random stuff. If you're a dude and you're not making less than 600, uh, less than 200,000 a year, your life hasn't even started yet. Yeah. Like, like that's a, that's a hot take, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, Ryan Panita said the same thing. I think Bradley said 20 grand a month. If you're not making 20 grand a month, like, okay, so let's, let's flesh that out. Is that true? Or is that only true in LA and, and coastal cities? Flesh that out. Is it realistic? How does that work in the, in the grand scheme of averages? And would you do it in a studio like this and just edit the yeah. video over after yep. rather than like trying to I do it I wouldn't edit the video. I would I would pay someone to do yeah, it for yeah, me for that sure. lives in that world. But yeah. you just watch it on YouTube like right here and yep. you'd be like, you'd, you'd watch it, you get it, and then you just model someone else's video that was a clip yeah let's do it let's let's walk through it right now since we're here nah, let's go here, I'm gonna... it's that time of year again. let's get it <laughs> okay so uh so this clip right here bradley says this is how you get a free car okay i go buy a range rover for 130,000. i drive it for three or four years it becomes worth sixty thousand. that is a depreciating item if i would have taken that hundred and thirty thousand dollars invested it wisely at 10% interest, I would make $13,000 a year on that money, but the money would still be there and compound. But the $13,000 would afford the Range Rover. So instead of paying $130,000 for a Range Rover saying, hey, it's paid for free and clear, I could invest the $130,000, take the money that I'm making from the investment and get a Range Rover for free. Or better yet, pass on the Range Rover. Keep driving the shit car. Let the thirteen. Now, now he's on. So, so it's, you see how he's flowing between like finance everything, but then kind of like Alex Hermosi, Dave Ramsey vibes. Like yeah. keep driving a poopy car. You know, yeah. it's it's interesting. Thousand dollars stack up, and in ten years you got three hundred thousand dollars doing the same. I go buy a Range Rover. Okay, so here's the issue with this, right? The issue with this is that every time you buy the Range Rover and you get the car note for the Range Rover, your overhead goes up. Yep. So I don't want a bunch of overhead, right? Can I afford the Range Rover right now? Sure, I could afford a thousand dollar car note. It's in the market. It's in, but do I want to have a thousand dollar car note? Then I'm gonna want another thousand dollar car note. And so he's missing out on the reality of lifestyle creep. Every time you go buy the Range Rover, you're increasing your lifestyle, and that could be so subtle. So now I, I don't need a, a a nice backpack. I want a I want a Louis Vuitton backpack. Yeah. I, I don't I don't I, I can't just eat at a at a at a decent steakhouse. I want to eat at the best steakhouse. I can't pay $200 for dinner. I got to pay $1,000 for dinner, right? And that lifestyle creep, I think, is something he's missing out on. Now, to his point, he would just say, just go make more money, which is like, well, what about when you don't make more money? What about when there's a disruption in your business, right? Yep. So my, my philosophy with that would be, uh, I would do the latter. I would get the cheap car, drive that into the ground, have so much money saved up, and so so many of my major expenses paid down so that I could take more risk, right? And and yep. that would be more of like the Dave, the Dave Ramsey Alex Hermosi paradigm, right? Now, I think it's cool, and maybe I will someday have a Range Rover, but I, th I think when it makes sense to do what he's describing is the 6,000 car rule. Have you seen this, the 6,000 car? No. So if you get a car that's 6,000 pounds or more, it could be oh, a yeah, business yeah. expense. Oh, right off, yeah, yeah. Up to 80%. Yep. So if I'm at the end of the year, if I have a hundred grand and I don't want to pay taxes on it, yep. maybe it makes sense to go buy that Tesla yep. and, and or get a car note for the Tesla maybe, which I'm usually not with car notes, but, and then 80,000 of that counts as a flatline depreciation considering you actually use it for business, yeah. right? But this idea of like increase overhead, increase overhead, increase overhead, increase overhead, it just sounds horrifying when I've seen people lose everything, you know? Yeah. And I've seen there be serious disruptions, Yeah, you and, know? Yeah, a hundred percent. And the I've seen people lose it all multiple times. They're 60 years old. They're like, I built just nine figures and then I lost lost it all twice. Yep. And I'm like, what if you just built to like eight figures and like didn't go so overboard on everything right, right. so that when something happened, you can consolidate and live to fight another day? Because right. what's the net positive if you just, it's like the guy who's like strict diet, loses yeah. 10 pounds yeah. and then eats like junk and gates it back. Yeah. Like, why didn't you just kind of like meet in the middle and lose yeah. three pounds rather than yeah. losing one at the end of the yeah. two weeks because you binge yeah. Yeah. famine feast? My philosophy would be, and I haven't done this yet, but I would like to, is like, what if my house was paid for, right? If my house is paid for then that means my only real overhead is food electricity you yeah, know yeah and, and, and if everything were to come down 
down, I know that my my biggest living expense would be my biggest expense, my, which is my living, my housing would be covered. Yep. Right now, maybe he would say that's not an abundance mindset. Grant Cardone said he would call you not an entrepreneur. Isn't that crazy? Yep. I, Russell Brunson paid off his house. Mm -hmm. So I sit down with Grant Cardone and I said, hey, I know that you're all about leveraging money. Mm -hmm. Russell paid off his house. Mm -hmm. He's obviously done hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about that? He goes, Russell's not an entrepreneur. Interesting. I have a clip on it. Yeah, yeah. Russell's Why? not an entrepreneur. He goes, because an entrepreneur is someone who takes, who builds businesses, a business or businesses taking on uh, greater than normal financial risk in order to do so because he's trying to mitigate his risk like that. He's not an entrepreneur. That's stupid. Because you're trying to mitigate <laughs> that, that, your risk. Be, that's, that's, my my that's my hot take though, right? dog. That's my hot take. That's dumb. Uh, I also did the same thing you talked about with my truck. Yeah. I had, I literally did the tax thing. I was okay. like, I have this tax bill mm -hmm. and I, I went out and I literally bought the truck that you see out there, mm -hmm. but a white one mm -hmm. in California mm -hmm. or in, in Austin mm -hmm. for strictly that exact thing. Yep. What, what he's even saying though is like, uh, you know, let me invest uh, 130K mm -hmm. at 10%, make mm -hmm. 13K a year. Mm -hmm. but And then mixing with you is like, well, take that 13K a year and continue to try your, your paid off car and right. use it towards other things. Right. Maybe pay off the house. Right. And who's actually going to put that 130K a year and invest it? That's the idea. Yeah, like yeah. The, all these little numbers games, like who's actually going to do that? You know, like yeah. who's actually going to put the 130K and invest it and get 10%? He, most folks aren't going to do that. So anyway. Uh, so that's how you do it, right? That's there. how we just did it. It's like, boom, boom, boom. You know, that, is that good? Is that good financial advice? I would say that's great financial advice for the Ryan Panitas and the Alex Hermoses and the Bradleys. Yeah, yeah. I'd say most people- And maybe that's people, who he's trying to hit, right? And maybe that's who he's trying to hit. But I think he's trying to sp speak to, to a broader audience. And I think most people uh, don't need the Range Rover. Yeah. Most people need to learn how to delay gratification and live below their means for a season before they go into this like, Bro, just I can, make I more I can money. do these things all day. I'm like, right? let's go. Yeah, so we just did it. Yeah, I love that, man. <laughs> I, this is something that you're going to see all incorporate it. I'll, I'll go through. I could add it to shows like this. You ever do it sitting with people? Yeah, all like, I'll do, let's watch all this. The and then I'll get the tech for it. A lot, a lot of times, what, what, what could also work is if you're actually sitting with someone who has content, like you pull up one of their own videos and like disagree with them on their own content. Dang, you know? yeah. let's go. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Dude, this is cool. I'm going to, I'm literally going to do this in the content. I'm going to okay. show you the different results from it. And then I'm going to be like, bro, this is what you got to be teaching in your mastermind, yo. You're just yep. like keeping it all from us. What's yep. up with that? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Well, the beautiful part about what we just did is the content makes it so. We could sit here for another hour and pull up every video from yep. Alex Hermosi and, you know, and some we're going to disagree with, some we're going to agree with, and it'll work. And so if you don't want to make the lion's share of your content like that, that's fine. You know, I, I think there's other things you can do that that speak to pain points, you know, that, that speak yep. to uh, issues, which is, you know, uh, Bradley and these guys do that. But I think infusing this stuff, just it's just an easy way to always have ideas. You know, you don't have to think as much of like, well, what about, you know, you could just say, oh, this is already a good video. Let's just infuse it. So good, bro. Well, I appreciate you allowing me to jump literally in your space. Also, man, thanks for coming <laughs> to the studio. I'm actually in your studio, but I'm grateful, man. It's awesome what you guys are doing. Would love for the people to get more connected to your channels, mm -hmm. even the Patreon. I mean, these guys are all running businesses. If they love that content, they go out there and watch it. Mm -hmm. I want them to get connected to that stuff. Some of the merch, if they like what you're wearing. I think that's yours, right? Yep. yep. I'm like, you better be. You should have just given me one. I could have taken off my wife's <laughs> turtleneck. I uh, like your turtleneck, yeah. bro. So how I can they get connected split. to your stuff? Uh, yeah, just Ruslan KD on all platforms. So if they just search Ruslan KD on YouTube, Ruslan KD uh, on Patreon, it's all the same. You heard it. Go get it. All right, brother. Thank you, Nick. Thanks, man. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to join me and other Christian men that are building financial wealth without sacrificing faith or family, click the link in my bio, join the free group.